Cause I own So I got to get my hustle on I own The following reaction has been brought to you by Jason JV Yo, what's good guys? It is your boy Jason JV saying welcome to another reaction bitch uh, here for the second channel and yes, yes, y'all, best believe we had to hit up this one. Why? Because this is the WWE 2K22 exclusive interview with the creative director and art producer. And uh, I believe this is being hosted. Uh, I'm not sure of the gentleman's name here on the left, but he's the one that's conducting the interview uh, for the channel Operation Sports. And so, and uh, be advised, guys, um, Unlike the reaction I did for the WWE 2K22 press conference for the, uh, which is the uh, full feature reveal, uh, I'm gonna do my best to eliminate because I did watch some of this. I didn't watch the whole thing all the way through. Um, there is gonna be a lot, a lot of filler talk, so I'm gonna do my best to eliminate a lot of the uh, filler talk. And because uh, uh, the gentleman here does ask questions in regards to like a lot of the features. He does ask questions in regards to the features in the game, you know what I mean? So, so we get some more uh, in-depth details, which is what the press conference was supposed to give us, but failed to do so. Best to just give you, like, you know, the answers that the uh, creative director and art producer give uh, in regards to the features. Yeah, the more detailed features involved in all of these different modes and what have you. You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So yeah, be, for, be for, uh, forewarned, there will be some jump cuts because again, I'm gonna eliminate a lot of the filler talk. So yeah, here we go. I, I gotta say so far, I'm very impressed with the screenshot of John Cena. I mean, you can literally see the the, the uh, details in this dude's uh, flesh. Obviously you can see like, you know, the, uh, the, the little wrinkles or the, the, the major wrinkles, I should say between the, uh, the side of his nose going down towards the size of his mouth. You know what I mean? It's just, and then you, you look, you can see the little, you know, little marks right here underneath his chin and everything It's just, yeah. And then the, the details in his, in his cap here, like you can see the uh, stitching here. You can see, you know, the, uh, the uh, material, excuse me, uh, for, for his cap and the uh, patches on his cap. And then you can definitely see the uh, texture in his shirt here, all the little stitching details and whatnot. Yeah, I mean this. I mean I take back what I said in the in the video when I saw the announced trailer. I mean this is so far looking really good. You can even see the details in this man's eyes, man. I mean that's just crazy. But yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a step up, a huge step up, man, from 2K22. That's for sure. A seasoned player because. You know, with the with you know combos, and we know butt mashers are exist, right? And and they will take advantage of that. But if you're deep and you understand the game, now that we have a block mechanic, now that we have dodge and combo breakers, right? And and you know, no more reversal stock, right? Like the the matches can be so competitive, right? Like yeah, to me, like we all know, like you know, in, in previous years, you knew that when you got someone down to where they use their last finisher, and you had a finisher left or stick your life. Yeah, I gotta say these these are definitely better models than 2K20. I mean, look at look at the details on Cena. You can see some of his veins here, kind of you know popping out. You know what I mean? Just man, like you, you can see in, in his hands. You know what I mean? E even like the wristbands, look. You know, just I mean they they, they still kind of have you know a little bit more of a of a, of a cartoonish animated look, but they. It's definitely a much improved look from the previous games. I mean, you can definitely see the textures in the wristbands. You know, I mean, you can see the little folds, the little creases, and whatnot. And then we have the Rock over here, who is looking, you know, much better uh, than he did in 2K20. That is for sure. Even though, um, in in my copy of 2K20, the Rock, I thought he looked he looked all right. He looked pretty decent. Uh, could he look better though? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't have the, the, the crazy facial glitches that a lot of other players had in 2K20. So I thought Rock looked okay. He didn't look the best, but I've seen far worse versions of the Rock. And that didn't come close as to being one of the worst. Not the best either, though. You know what I mean? Just, just to be clear. But this right here, though, this definitely look, look, looks like Rock. You know what I mean? Like the, his, his side profile here and then his, his build here. Yeah, this definitely screams uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for sure. 
Uh, Cena, the only thing... The only thing I'm, I'm going to call suspect on is, is Cena's hair. Um... I don't know. Cena's hair to me, it looks a bit off, especially like right here, or like on the side, how it kind of goes into this this, this kind of like, like like down slope, if you will, or this this uh, decline right here going towards the back. I would say that's a little um, that's actually inaccurate. Cena's hair is actually it's actually more straight. You know what I mean? As far as like like the uh, the uh, fade, the uh, yeah the fade that he has on the side, it's a little bit more straighter than that it doesn't really go into this real pronounced uh decline if you will and um the length on the top of his hair i'm gonna call uh, suspect as well uh that needs to be just a just a just a tad bit shorter um but i mean overall it still looks good i mean the side cena's side profile i mean it does look spot on it's just it's just the hair to me i find it's just a little bit off but but of course, you know what I mean. That's just a minor nitpick for me. I think overall, though, it's still, it still looks pretty good. Like, oh, I got it. It's you know, it's game over, right? You know, good luck, good luck, like kick it out of the. Oh yeah, and Sasha Banks and apologies, you know what I mean? When I when I pause, it brings up all this crap right here. But uh, but from what I can see though, with, with Sasha Banks, oh yeah, she looks she looks amazing. She looks spectacular. Um, you know the little sliver where now like button pressing um, for button mashing for like you know for, for pins is in there right so you're like you're button mashing so to me it feels way more competitive and the matches like uh, to me it's like watching the WWE match like you know I, you say, I would say like a SummerSlam match where someone gets suplex now here we got a screenshot of uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and yeah overall I think I think he looks pretty good yeah uh, I can see the details in his armband here. That looks that looks pretty good. Uh, his face, it's it's definitely a lot better than 2K20. I would dare say it's even better than 2K19. And we all know that the models in 2K19 are far superior than the models in 2K20. So I mean, yeah, this is definitely a huge step up. And yeah, the hair is heavily detailed and everything. You know, I mean, even uh, like 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 the side here where it's really cut short. You can see just how detailed that is. I mean, it, it looks more lifelike. It looks more realistic. I'll, I'll give it that much. Like 15, 18 times, right? Where it's just like, man, it keeps going and going if you're that good, right? And to me, we're trying to mitigate all those things that used to, you know, people used to cheese, but like, you know, it, it, but it's still fun at the end of the day. Like, I, I love the fact that, you know, if I'm playing against Christina, even though I might be a little bit more, you know, seasoned, uh, you know, like we can both have, a, we can have, we both have a good time. But there's that unpredictability of like she might beat me, right? You know, you just never know. Okay, so uh, how similar is the gameplay to some of the old classic wrestling games that many fans like hold so dear to the heart? Because I've always had this theory, right? A lot of times, game fans ask for certain things in games, but they don't realize they don't really want that exactly the way it was because they haven't taken in the consideration that there's been 25 years since that happened so what i think they really want is they want to feel the way they felt then yes. so the challenge of the developer is to create a mechanic that gives the same feeling not the exact same system so how does it feel similar to that way uh i mean with like i think you, you summed it up perfectly we stand every year we put out a game we're standing on the shoulders of giants right and not not to cut my man off but i mean i just can't help but really appreciate the details on ray mysterio i mean look, look at the boots man look at look at the the uh, creases and wrinkles in the boots i mean man and then even in the in the in the tights you know what i mean in his on on his I don't know if, if that's a singlet or if, if it's a two-piece uh, gear that, that he's wearing, but the tights though, man, look, look, look at the uh, sheens and the shadows and the uh, creases, even on the knee pads, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely detailed out to the max. Even on like you know his face and his mask and everything, yeah, it, it looks good. They they even got the tattoos, all the little details on his tattoos. 
Okay. All right. I, I, I see what you're doing, 2K. I see what you're doing. Okay. Like, like, you know, like we're looking at what people have done in previous, not only, you know, uh, wrestling games, but, you know, more current fighting games like, you know, what you might see in the action pack games with superheroes and things like that. And like, you know, the games have evolved so much in the 25 years. And since that one game that people keep talking about has existed. And like you're saying, like they think they want that. But yeah, they want that feeling. They want that, you know, to, to me, it, it's all about. And do I understand the controls enough to to get the result that I'm looking for, right? And but also have that depth and that competitiveness. And we've, uh, to me, I think we've hit that. Like, I mean, it is like what Christine said. Like when you pick it up, it. I'm, I'm you know, I know it's our tagline, but it's <laughs> it hits different. Like it straight up hits different, and you, it's undeniable. Where I think in previous games where we would mess with the controls and say, oh yeah, new controls game, you're like. No, they just move some buttons around and change this up a little bit. No, this is completely different. The pace is different. Like the controls are different. The fact that you have to learn like, you know, what combos do and they're different for every superstar. It's almost like the old school days of you opening up, you know, those Prima guides and looking for like, oh, how do I perform this move? Like that's the kind of depth that we've introduced into this game. And to me, it's it's the foundation that we're going to to build on for years to come we're not gonna abandon it right like it like i feel confident in saying like this is the one i'm sitting there and they're showing us the game i can't remember which version this is i think it was like 19. and i literally it was a year randomizer <coughs> was origin it was was created 19. okay so i'm literally i'm sitting there and they're like okay you you want to see the game and i'm sitting there creating characters like back to back to back to back it's i'm just that way i don't know why but i'm a creation guy like chicken fried joe and again that's always been my, my 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 sweetener when getting these games you know what i mean I, I i'm a huge huge fan of the creation suite like i said i love creating my own my own wrestlers i love you know being able to put myself in the game you know what i'm saying and uh I, and, that, and that i can create you know uh, uh, whatever other characters I want to put in, you know what I mean? Both males and females, and uh, I love the whole creator arena aspect. You know what I mean? I like I like making holiday theme arenas. You know what I mean? Like Halloween themed arenas, Christmas theme arenas. Um, you know what I mean? And it, because you know they now have you know the WCW um, uh, stuff is in the game. You can make you know WCW arenas. You can make NWO arenas and stuff. I, I love that stuff. You know what I mean? custom championships and everything and uh one thing that, that they're, they're going to touch on later on that i wish that they that they would include in their games is uh creator finisher you know what i mean i would love for them to do to bring back creator finisher because um there, there was a variation of the stone cold stunner that i've been wanting back into these games for the longest time and uh that was the the uh the, the ability to do the double stunner. I think it was uh, SmackDown. Shut your mouth. No, no, I think it was SmackDown. Here comes the pain. Because I think that one came out around the time of WrestleMania 20. And I believe that was the last SmackDown title before they changed it to the SmackDown vs. Raw in 2005. I think so, and I think SmackDown vs. Raw 2005 had this version of the stunner that I'm talking about, where um, they, they 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 refer to it as the uh, WrestleMania stunner, where Stone Cold Steve Austin gave Scott Hall a stunner, but Hall didn't didn't, didn't fall to the ground or anything. He he stayed on his feet, and Austin had to give him another one, which caused him to fly back. So yeah, I would like to at least create um, a double stunner finisher if I can do that. You know what I mean? That'd be dope. What I used to do. With, with, with my guy, with, with me, when I put myself in the game, I would give myself the ability to do the first half of the double stunner, and then while the dude was stunned, I would spear him. You know what I mean? So hit him with that with that special stunner, and then spear him, and then set him up for my my uh, finisher. Yeah, I, I used to have a lot of fun with that. I, would, I wish they would bring that back. But like you, yeah. you were coming up with names <laughs> for him and everything. <laughs> I can't even remember. That's so bad. I spent so much time and I can't even remember the, the details of what I made. But what can be customized in WWE 2K22? So we know obviously you can make creative wrestlers. Um, arenas, I'm, I'm assuming, are back. Uh, and championship belts. 
Uh, is there anything else that can be customized or created? No, you know, t for us, like we look at the creation suite and we look at everything that, you know, we, we gave to users in previous years and took a hard look at like, you know, we pretty much offered everything, right? You know, um, and the things that we felt like we were offering. Uh, not quite everything. Again, I don't want to be one of those guys, you know what I mean? Because beggars can't be choosers. But I mean, like I said, if you can give us create a finisher, that would be cool. Um, if you can give us create a taunt, like the old THQ games you used to give us, who remembers the uh, create a taunt? I know I did. I used to have a lot of fun with those too. I would come up with crazy taunts. Um, if you can give us that, you know what I mean, or one or the other, you know what I'm saying? Like I'd be good with either one. Or um, what was another thing that you, you can also create? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So either create a finisher or create a taunt. For the most part, we're solid but flawed, right? We saw it in, in previous iterations that, like, you know, by allow, you know, by giving people too much freedom, now you're messing with quality, right? Like, and so we would, you know, like I remember you going through randomization, and there'd be some. And I'm glad he said that, because I I feel like that was one of the 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 huge um, factors that ruined 2K20. Um, like the, I, I feel like what killed 2K20 was the whole, um, the, the uh, 2K Originals DLC, you know, the bump in the night, the, the freaking, um, what was it, the, the Empire of Tomorrow, the Wasteland, and then the South Paul Regional thing. I think that was one of those things that really hurt the game overall, especially in the creative department when you try to create a unique superstar um, implementing the attire pieces and other things that you can unlock with those 2k uh, original DLC packs uh, I mean I don't want to sound like I'm giving them an out for what happened because but I mean I, I can I can understand because you gotta understand too these guys this is the creative director this is the art director these are the guys who, the guys and gals that work on, on these games. So obviously they know more about what goes into properly developing these games than we the fans, we the players would ever know, right? So, I, but I mean, I, I can definitely see that. You know what I mean? I don't want to say that's exactly, I know I'm, I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but I want to take back what, what, what I said. Um, I, I, I don't want to give them that out quite just yet because you know i want to see how 2k22 plays out because i know uh with some of the stuff that they're going to be giving us there was some stuff that they, that they said that they had to take out so i want to see you know if the quality control issues that 2k20 suffered was it because of all the like i said the dlc packs those 2k original things and the new attire pieces they, they were trying to give us and everything because maybe that's what it was maybe it was just just too much it, it, it was overkill and that's what uh, hindered the quality of the game overall. You know what I mean? That that could be what it is. You know what I mean? I don't want to say that's what it is exactly because for all I know, I could be wrong either way. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it, it is not. Who knows? But anyway, let's get back into this. Some that you would like, you would, you would, you would like and laugh at, but then there was some where you would laugh at in a in a bad way right and so right. in order for us to mitigate that we had to put certain constraints on on things to make sure that that quality bar is on par with like we talk about evolution you know with the games of today right you look at like you know what our partners at nba 2k are doing with their career mode and their customization and i you know there was that gap right in, in quality and and we see like they didn't have as many options as we had as far as like you, you know being able to customize but that quality bar like you know their their players that they were customizing looked as good as the nba players and there was always that disconnect with us right when you look at our you know what you would build in cast versus a john cena or you know Roman reigns or undertaker and then we made this big jump in our quality and our superstars already with this year using that same t scanning technology that we have you know from nba over to wwe and you see it with the the videos and the screenshots like it's a huge jump and that separated us even more right and so like we poured 
our efforts into like you saw the big boy body like making sure that all those things that people want they want that yokozuna body type or you know they want the the cast bodies to look as good as the superstars so that's what we did we focused on making sure that we're providing the users with high quality artwork that they can go and customize to their heart's content so basically what he's saying to kind of shorten up what he's saying is basically uh, quality over quantity you know what i'm saying he wants to make sure that a lot of these things that that you're able to incorporate all throughout in, in various modes of the game that they work just as well as they would in other modes you know what i'm saying so that and that's the thing and all that is time consuming you gotta understand it takes it takes uh, developers a whole year remember these used to be yearly drops these games they used to be yearly drops but they had to take a year off to make sure that this game that they're putting out is going to be you know a game worth bringing the the, the uh, players back bringing us players back to you know what i'm saying so yeah i i get what where, where he's trying to where, where, where he's coming from you know what i mean that they, they want to make sure that whatever they put into this game it's going to be up to our expectations you know what i'm saying they want to make sure that you know they don't shoot themselves in the foot by giving us more than what this game is is able to handle you know what i'm saying and i i feel like that's what they did with 2k20 they, they were trying to give us you know a lot you know what i mean a lot more than you know what i mean and then than what that game was actually able to handle i mean that that's just my opinion you know what i mean you're more than welcome to, to disagree with that you know what i mean it's all good either way but i feel like i think that's what happened you know what i mean they, they were trying to outdo themselves with each game that they put out which you know okay you know that that's great but you know don't don't you know overjudge don't don't uh misjudge you know what i mean the the, the uh, limitations that these games have you know what i mean so yeah i mean I, I get it quality over quantity and it looks like they unfortunately had to learn that the hard way but it sounds like like they've learned from their past mistakes one can only hope and pray and uh from what i heard from those who played who were able to play the game at their headquarters um it, it seems like they they really learned their lesson so let's, let's let's see what happens when the game actually drops and the rest of us get to experience it you know what i'm saying let's go now with that we had to make certain concessions like hey maybe the blending of two body types that was causing a ton of issues and we saw it in previous games where like the cloth would explode or the robe would explode or you yeah. just clipping everywhere right yes. like that to me is not quality right right and mm -hmm. again games are evolving to where people are i would say people are less accepting of those types of issues right and they just right. want something that looks great right and so that was our response exactly you know what i mean because at the end of the day we're the paying customers we're the ones who are investing into your company we're helping your company make money so yes we want to make sure that these games that we're getting they are up to snuff they are up to par you know what i mean that they are good quality games we're not just going to let you you know get away with certain things you know what i mean especially with with today's current day with today's current gaming climate with with where uh with, with where we're heading as far as like graphics you know what i'm saying and just you know the uh, the uh the uh, special effects and everything you know what i mean with things looking more realistic and everything you know what i mean no we 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 have expectations and they deserve to be these expectations deserve to be met especially with the price points of these games PS4, uh, Xbox One games, 60 bucks. PS5, Xbox Series S and X games, 70 bucks. If we're gonna pay that kind of money for these games, these games need to look and feel like they're worth every single red cent that we're giving you in order to have these games. Ability is to make sure that what you're seeing on screen doesn't break you from that you know that reality that we're trying to present to you right the illusion of you know you feeling like you're a superstar or you're bringing some you're one of your best creations into the match and all of a sudden it's blowing up like you know that's that's not what we set out to make we set out to make a great looking game with a ton of creative creativity but in doing so yeah we had to remove some things but to me it's you look at like some of the things that we were able to pull up it looks like and i'm glad they did this too it looks like they got rid of that whole slider system which i hated because i felt like um, when it comes to creating certain characters, especially with like, you know, when you want to make their physique, their physiques 
look a certain way to be of certain builds you know what i mean whether it's a heavy set wrestler or or a totally jacked up wrestler you know what i'm saying i felt like that slider system really hindered that you know what i mean and uh, in 2k20 i found out there's actually a, a body morph glitch that you can do you know what i'm saying which uh, i've been having a lot of fun with and um been uploading a, a lot of uh creator wrestlers in the uh, community creation uh uh section of the game but yeah I'll, i'm glad they finally got rid of that 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 slider system you know what i mean because i hated that I, I i missed the old um create a superstar system when uh when you want to make again you want to make your stars you know have a certain type of build or whatever you can do that manually with each body part you know what i mean like you can make the arms bigger on your own or smaller you know what i mean or whatever and you can make the torso you know big or small or whatever I, I i prefer that system over the uh slider system you know what i'm saying that's just me though flop and it's night and day from what we've ever done yeah and, and like now and i know a lot of people some people may not know this but like you're an artist so from an artist eye that critique on the visual component of a game it's probably going to be even st stiffer from you then it might be from somebody else because artists see things. Speaking of Jack, man, man, homegirl here looks like she works out, man. Look at look at her traps, man. This girl is this girl is built to whip some ass. I'm just saying. And like from because this is art. Gameplay visuals are is art. True. And so an artist is going to see that differently. So um yeah, I, I definitely receive that and in, in what you're saying. Um so there was one particular creation point. Well, first before I say that. Is randomizer still there? Oh yeah. Okay. You know, that's that. Well, I'm, I'm that. Well, in my mind, okay. that's the Brian Mazik feature. Okay. Like, when we debuted, okay. you were the only one at that. I don't always use randomizer personally, but I, it, it's nice to have it there, though. So I'm not complaining. I'm not saying get rid of it. No, keep keep the randomizer there, because like I said, I, I I don't always use it, but I sometimes do. You know what I mean? And it kind of helps give me an idea um, as to where I want to go as far as like a creative direction with any new creative wrestler that I want to make, you know what I mean? The event that pops so hard for it. I'm like, that's, 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 that's the BM. That's the BM feature right there. Okay. I, whew. I, okay, I was, about, I was about to go through. I was, Elizabeth, I was about to have one. So I, I didn't know what was going to happen. But, okay, so, so, and I, and I think we, my man did the Red Fox reference, man. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. Breath. Built on top of that. So like, you know, with, you know you look at like what we've done with randomizer and yeah there's you know a ton of options that you can go and just randomizing and put on but we know that that wasn't fitting the bill for a lot of people and we want that entry level for a lot of users to be frictionless as possible and so what we added this year was the personas right so when you first start up there's these predetermined personas that you know i like i created along with some of the other designers that like hey you know and they're they're categorized in different yeah you know, um in in, in different you know occupations or or different personas like you know like they'll be like you know uh fantasy or future or whatever you know whatever it may be and it starts oh that would be cool yeah cause I, I i never noticed the whole personas thing well no that, that's not entirely true um when they did a the little teaser and they showed the, the uh, creation suite and they were showing the various uh creative wrestlers and various builds and whatnot i did notice a little persona thing and i was wondering like, what, what what is that you know what i mean and he said it, it can be like a a character driven thing you know what i mean like um like futuristic fantasy or whatever so i wonder if with that being the case if they're gonna give us something like the um like the 2k originals thing which now now hear me out on this if this game is capable of handling you know the 2k originals thing and uh, they want to do incorporate some of that, that that fantasy element and whatnot. I'd be perfectly fine with that because at the end of the day, look, it's optional as to whether or not you want to play that, and it's optional as to whether or not you want to incorporate that in your creative wrestlers and your, you know, what I mean, in your GM mode. In, in this case, for this game or your uh, universe mode, if universe mode is in this game. Um, or in just your regular exhibition matches, you know what I'm saying? If you want to make those kind of characters, you know what I mean? I know, I know, not everybody liked that. Me, I did actually like that um, because you know what I mean. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a geek. You know what I mean? I love like like comic book movies stuff. So 
to see that being incorporated into a WWE game, it was a nice attempt in 2K20, I'm not going to lie, especially with me being a fan of something like that, but I mean, it doesn't change the fact that that, to me, kind of helped hurt that game, you know what I mean, as far as like its quality overall, but um, if they're able to bring that back and, uh, it, it, and, it, and, it, and it doesn't hurt the, the overall quality of the game, which from what I'm hearing, it, it doesn't seem to be the case, then I'd be cool with that, you know what I mean, let's go. Starting off, like you'll have like four to six options of like, oh, this is a really cool outfit that you know I, I made up, and I'm like, oh, that looks dope. I'm gonna put that in the game, and so that's a preset. So like, if you want to just go in quickly and just assign something that looks cool because you're intimidated by the amount of creativity that you know is, is at your disposal, you can quickly get in and get out and get into the matches, or use that as a starting point and then randomize maybe the you know the, the feet or the boots or you know like whatever it may be. And you're like, okay, cool. Like, I, now I feel good about my creation and go into it, and it's less intimidating. Because I think, for me, guys like you... And that's what I liked about the uh, the, the, the uh, My Player mode in the uh, 2K20. I like how you can have... You can start out with one type of attire, and then as you progress in the story, you can unlock new attire pieces, and then you can always, you know, customize your, your attire as the story progresses and everything. And you can, you know, uh, change up your, your your character's look too um, as you progress through the story. So I like that. We it sounds like we're we're still gonna have that in regards to the my rise, which is which is a good thing. You know what I mean? You who who are experts at using the creation suite are the ones that are populating a lot of the stuff we see on community creations. And and I felt like that entry level for you know more inexperienced users was just like nah I don't feel confident with my abilities and so to me I felt like we bridged that gap. Yeah, you know I really think um, WWE series has done such a good job creating a tool for a community that, in my opinion, just yeah that, that's another aspect that I like visiting too in the WWE games ever since they, they introduced it and that's the community creations because uh. You know what I mean? It, it, it depends on what kind of a mood that, that I'm in. If I want a certain character, but I don't really have the time or the patience to figure out how to make that character and make them look exactly how I would want them to look, I like being able to go to the community creations and look for that character. And if it's there, then I can just download it. And boom, I'm good to go. You know what I mean? They already got the move set. They already got their entrance set. Sometimes they have the move set, but not the entrance, but it's like, eh. That's all right. I'll, I'll work on the entrance. You know what I mean? You, you, you already did the hard part for me, and that's make the character that I wanted to make. You know what I mean? Bruh. Extends the longevity of every single game that comes out in the version. The WWE communicate uh, community creations. There, that whole community is, in my opinion, one of the strongest in any video game, like in across the industry. The work, the stuff that those guys and girls do like literally like i'm telling you i'm talking like 10 hours after a pay-per-view they're making little alterations on the side of seth rollins's pants like it's like crazy and i'm like this is like dope and like the fact that 2k realizes that this community is an asset to them and they give them the tools that they need just by creating dope you know a dope creation suite i think that is really phenomenal honestly yeah. Well, like, to, I, I forgot to mention, to use that, did we add anything to the crazy scene? And I think this is the one that you would appreciate. And those, you know, those men and women who do, you know, upload so many creations on, like you're saying, the day, you know, 10 hours after a pay-per-view or day one on launch, you'll see like, mm -hmm. you know, just, just so much like good content and great content up on, 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 on our site. But the biggest disconnect is, you know, we've always had when we used portraits in the past and in our menus is, you know, hey, here's a really great picture that, you know, we curated of Seth Rollins. And then here's your render of your cast model. And this year, I am proud to announce uh, that we have custom images that you can use in the menus. So for a character select screen, you can put your a photo of, of Brian Mazik, you know. That's there. right. Yo, I like that. So if I were to make myself, then I could just take an image of me and I could put that to represent my, my, my creative wrestler. Okay, let's go. Flexing, 
kitchen. That's spot right. Up, right next to the, 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 the good picture of Seth Rollins. They, and then if I want to make comic book characters like the Joker or Batman or whatever, I can use like like their images to represent those those creative wrestlers. Let's go. Let's can put it. Chocolate Thunder up there. <laughs> Chocolate <baby>. Thunder. <laughs> Yes, that's right. No, I think that's dope. But you know, honestly, there's a feature that I read about in you know some of the data that came that is related to Creation Suite that I think honestly is even bigger than that one. Cross platform sharing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, like, it's been... yo, cross platform sharing. See, this is why I'm glad I um I pre-ordered both versions of the NWO edition for both the Xbox and the PlayStation. Because now, if I want to switch back and forth, I can transfer. My creator wrestler is from either platform to the other one. You know what I mean? Bruh, okay. Hell yeah, let's go. But the one feature that you didn't mention, and I'm thinking it's probably because it's not in there, is <laughs> create a finisher. It, it is not. Now, I hope when, when they said that they had to take some stuff out, I hope they got rid of that stupid bluff punch animation. Who remembers that bluff punch animation? And in, in not only 2K20, but in 2K19, where... You're trying to grab your opponent, right? So you can put them in another move, or you know what I mean, as they're trying to stand up, and then all of a sudden, like randomly, your your character would do this, like, 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 like what? What you say? You know what I mean? Like, 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 like they're, like they're threatening to punch your, their opponent, but they won't really do it. They're doing, they're doing this. I've always hated that. I hope they got rid of that in this game. Not saying it's off the table forever, but like with everything that we've done this year, we felt like it was safer for us to like, you know figure you know focus on the things that we have on our plate right now and then start you know uh looking at those types of features from the past it's a fighting game but yet you can go anywhere damn near right and so you're like oh so you can also climb on the top rope which you can't really do in you know a, a traditional 2d fighter or you can go outside the ring or you can interact with this table or climb this ladder or put this thing up here and go that's the thing i hate too as far as like the limitations is um, especially when it comes to wanting to smash the announce tables I hated that you can't just go on top of the announce tables anymore like like you used to and you can just use any any slam move no I hated that when you have to you have to take the topper off which I mean that was always a standard so I'm not even like really worried about that too much but then uh, when you take the topper off it used to be where you can just throw your opponent up on the table, you can climb up on the table with them, you can fight on the table, and then like I said, you can use like a body slam, basic body slam move, or like a backflip move, or even like a sidewalk slam, or side slam type move, any kind of slamming move really, or, or impact move, where you use your opponent's um, body basically to impact through the table, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, it's just they have this system now where you have to lean your opponent against the table and then if you have a table finisher then the the prompt for the table finisher will, will pop up and you have to hit that and that's the only way you smash the table you know what I mean um, and then another thing that I, I used to love doing that you can't do on these games anymore is being able to lay your opponent up on top of the table climb up to the, to the top of the corner and then leap from the from the corner right on to your opponent and smash them through the table that way i used to love doing that now you can't really do that anymore unless it's your table finisher on the ramp and then head backstage like there's so much to me it's like it's more like a you know old school power stone or bushido blade like those games where you you know you still had combat but like you can go anywhere and it, it creates it presents so many more challenges and we welcome that challenge but once you introduce one new thing, you have to make sure it works in every single one of those scenarios. My GM, one of the most requested things in the world. And it's so crazy, right? Because I'm I'm all involved with the My GM hype and I love it because I'm a franchise mode kind of guy. I'm, I love it. But at the same time, in my mind, I'm thinking, do people really know what exactly they want from this feature? Like, I know we want control and we want to make this stuff and we want to do all this. We want to create our own. In my opinion, no. When people were saying, oh, I want my GM mode, my GM mode, you're basically saying you want to be in control of one show and work underneath somebody. With universe mode, you're Vince McMahon. You have total control over everything. All the shows throughout the year, Raw, 
SmackDown, NXT 205. Uh, you had total control over all of those shows. You had total control over the overall roster, the rivalry, all that stuff. And you want to give all that up to to be um, a general manager of one show? Hmm. On shows. But do we know what we really, really want? If we did like a poll, and I love the fact that Patrick put out those polls and the poll results, I thought that was fire. Like it was, to me, it was exactly the type of open communication that was needed after a game comes out that the community doesn't like. That is, to me, was perfect, right? So my question is how, well, my first question about my GM is, how does it differ from the universe mode that we've always had? So it's completely different. It's a it's a totally separate engine, totally separate UI. So I, I the way I look at universe, universe is you know to me it's 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 kind of god mode, right? Where you're like, I'm I'm in control of all this. I can control yep. like, you know, my ratings and yep. I, you know, changing my attributes and you know, yep. just you, you have full control over everything, right? Yep where my GM which, which I love there's limitations right like yes. you're basically Vince McMahon is the one basically running the show and you're a GM or let's say in this in, this, in our case it's it, you know it's Triple H and you which I do not love because the general manager story has been done to death and needs to die all right I'm done with the general manager story that's part of the reason why I really don't watch it anymore it's because the whole general manager thing Ever since Austin and McMahon, that whole general manager nonsense, even though no one else is doing it. Like, you look at AEW, I don't even think they have a, a general manager over there. Then TNA Impact tried to do it, but then they, they basically copied everything that WWE did during the Attitude Era, so it failed for them. You know what I mean? It's just the GM stuff needs to be done already, man. Bruh, let's go. You're underneath him, or, you know. You know other other gms from our past like you know, you're like okay i'm going to select them and now i'm going to run my show and now i have someone who is basically judging whether i'm doing a good job or not right and so once you take that approach now there's a game there, right like where you, you we gamified it so it's just like okay now go and draft your superstars and your here's your ratings and here's how much money you're generating oh you don't have that much money you can't put on this type of show right and so or you can't sign these superstars, right? So there's there's handcuffs on you, and there's mm -hmm. someone watching you and grading you, and and the fans. Uh, Christina and I were talking about this. Like the fans are watching and commenting on how well you're doing in our little social media feed on the side, right? Like there's so much there, and if you want, if you want to be that evil GM where you don't like how you know this matchup, and you think you might want to lend a hand to someone, guess what? I'm gonna go into that match, interfere as the GM. Which I'm not gonna lie, that actually is a, a, a lot of fun. You, you you can decide what kind of GM you want to be. Do you want to be a, a, a heel GM or do you want to be a babyface GM? You know what I'm saying? Um, do you want to be that GM that's always making tag matches? Holla holla, player. Or do you want to be um, again the evil GM who? favors the heels and then re recreate the corporation I guess I don't, I don't know I don't know but I mean like I said man I'll, I'll check it out you know what I mean no guarantees I'm gonna like it but I will check it out you know what I'm saying and I, I'm all for having it there as an option like I said it's an option you know some of us are gonna use it some, some of us are gonna play that mode some of us are not you know what I'm saying it is what it is bro let's go and watch ringside and if I like you know don't like what's going on I'm gonna distract the ref maybe throw in a chair or do whatever right so again like it's a totally separate mode and yes you still can go and play the matches you can you can simulate uh, you can interfere and even spectate using you know uh, it's this spectate is exclusive to my GM which are no it's not exclusive to my GM you, you, you can you can watch matches play out in universe mode you can simulate matches in universe mode you can also play matches in universe mode so that right there is not entirely true yeah where you have these predetermined cameras so now you're like someone in the camera or in you know a certain area in the in, in the arena cycling through different camera angles and just watching and changing on the fly right so like okay that's different and that i can't wait to check out 
you know what I mean, changing up the camera angles. So that explains why, you know, they had Drew McIntyre talking to one of the developers talking about changing up the camera angles. Now I see where they're getting at with that. And that does sound cool. I ain't gonna lie. That does sound interesting. To me, it's it's a totally separate mode uh, and a totally separate game. Be able to build a very balanced team and we provide the option for players to, hey, like, auto like auto build your roster so that you have a balanced team where you can go through and draft superstars yourself and also okay i like that uh, auto draft or manual draft okay so you'll have as lionel said there's different different aspects after the match of how your match is broken down and triple h will give you feedback and so the community via social media will also give you feedback as to what match types work what match types don't work or or give you feedback on your pairing. And it, it feels very, one, when Triple H is giving you that. So basically the IWC will be in the game and they're gonna dictate as to whether or not you're doing a good job. Great. Um, the, the advice on how to build your matches, you're like, oh man, you're like really looking out for me. This is awesome. <laughs> and when you're getting some feedback from the player community or from the community itself, it's like, oh man, they're really disappointed in me. And you uh, you get to see, you, you're, each week you have these different commissioner goals to meet as well. Okay, no, I don't like this system right here. So you're putting players in a position to where they could easily fail because you're trying to get them to, you're putting them in this, in this simulated process where okay what they do is being dictated by the IWC you know what I mean the IWC is going to dictate how you run your shows and what kind of matches you should be putting on and who should be in a tag team I don't like that no no well and you're able to um to either upgrade your different matches um, based off of that or or just upgrade your be able to draft free agents and legends as well based off of meeting those goals too so or an enhancement talent as well that's true, that's true. <laughs> yeah yeah enhancement so. talent i'm gonna say the official <laughs> term so so uh so if i'm understanding correctly and i and i really did aka a jobber i'll say it you would like to hear is that it's not just against the cpu you can play against another person okay okay so it can be like all right so here we go so you have the option of playing against, you know, um, AI GMs, or you can play against another player. Now, here's the big question: Is it just local play, meaning that you have to have the second player in the same room with you, playing on the same console with you, or will there also be some online play? Let's find out. Like head to head, my GM. Yes. And, so, and, so Christina and I will like she'll play, pick SmackDown. She'll be the you know she'll run SmackDown. I'll run Raw, and we can both draft and sit there and watch and and, and look at the results or like decide to play one of the matches. So like it's, it's definitely some, okay. some co-op there. And is there is that only is that couch co-op only or is there is there an online component there? Online. So it's not. I wouldn't say it's necessarily online. Like you can go and search for someone to go find and, and on the lobby, but like you can play against people on your friends list. Got it. Okay. Okay. So. You, it, it, if your friends like you and your friends that you have in your friends list you know what I mean on your on your PlayStation your Xbox whatever platform you're on you guys can play GM mode online it's been officially announced here so yes there will be online uh, you know my GM play you know what I'm saying bruh which yeah that, that that's dope that is probably the one of the most innovative things that I've heard about this mode that I'm totally cool with it. Let's go. When you do different spectator modes, do you have an access to how much of the hood is showing when you're in those different spectator modes? Yeah, so we you know we have the option to like hide the controls. So we're like, you know, like like you know, the the tip control similar to like in, in highlight and real and replay. Um, and then you can also like, you know, in the in the game options choose to hide HUD. Um, and it'll just it'll listen to that you know that setting that you have in your your overall setting. Hmm. Okay, and then in universe mode, which is still somewhat similar, but what it's different is is there are no restrictions. There it is a complete kind of like sandbox mode for you to do whatever you want. There and there are no metrics. The only thing that your objective is here is to just have as much fun as you have can have having complete control over the entire WWE universe. 
Yes and no. Okay. Uh, we did we did add superstar mode uh, to okay. so it's basically it's player lock. So like you can right. choose to do the traditional what you have just described with universe mode or okay. the superstar mode. So like if okay. you want to choose you know Charlotte Flair and just focus on Charlotte Flair, not have any control over anything else and just play through a cool story as Charlotte or you want to switch it up and be you know Becky or Bailey like that that is you know that is now a thing. Okay. Mm. Okay. Cool. Cool. I dig it. I dig it. Interesting. Interesting. But it does sound like like there still is a universe mode. Which okay, I'm good with that. The replay suite. Um, I've always wanted it to be a little bit more expanded because just from a content creator standpoint, and then even just from a fun standpoint, like sometimes uh, there will be a sequence that happened in the match, and you want to be able to like show it from a certain angle, mm. uh, zoom in, take images and like screenshots and stuff like that. I think it's really dope for uh, sharing on social media. You know, it, it you know like man like if something like i can just imagine content creators before raw putting up images that they constructed in in the replay suite and then like dropping those before raw and then even after raw maybe they reenacted something that they saw like when uh who was it evan bourne when he did the 450 or not the 450 the uh, shooting star and randy orton was laying down and he popped up and caught him in the rko I remember someone uh, recreated that with one of the older games. You know what I mean? Somehow, with, and I think they used the highlight reel mode in order to clip those two video clips together to make it look like you know Orton actually did that in the game, which is dope. Have you done anything to kind of expand on the replay suite? Unfortunately, no. Um, okay. You know, it's one of the things that we know. Like, there's a ton of you know traction with what you said like you know exposing more controls and having more like presets and things like that or like just you know just more functionality and unfortunately we just didn't have with everything on our plate that we decided to touch we just didn't have the capacity to really put a lot of effort into redesigning because that's what it would have it yeah. taken it's just a whole redesign of that whole system mm. and so um you know i i'm listening <laughs> but you know uh this year uh unfortunately no uh create a story which i personally never really used because there's nor did I. I i made some attempts in using the create a story but never really like never really like like, like follow through and fully committed myself to go out my way to, to create the story because uh, i'm more interested in just wanting to play the matches and create characters and play the matches, you know what I mean? And play the uh, season mode, the career mode, my player, now the my rise, you know what I mean? Um, and then when they had like the, the showcases, play the showcases, the road to WrestleManias and all that, that's really all I cared about. Playing the universe mode, if anything, I wish they would somehow make it where you can, like whatever you do in universe mode, you know what I mean? Like, like kind of, you know, expand on the whole, you know, storyline aspect in, in universe mode. If they can figure out how to do something like that, that would be cool. Or, you know what I mean? Where they, they can create more cutscenes and stuff, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Based on like the actions, like the actions of that, that, that you take in the match or whatever. Like in a tag match scenario, um, if you decide to betray your tag team partner, you know what I mean? Then give us a cutscene that, that, that goes, goes along with that. And then, um, and then automatically, like you know, put your players in like a promo segment or some kind of segment. You know what I mean? Where it's the two of them interacting, and to really kick off like like the rivalry and everything. You know, if you can do something like that with universe mode to really to really expand on that. You know what I mean? I think that that would be impressive. That would be amazing and be worth going back to time and time again very few creation tools that intimidate me options excite me even if i can't even get to them all i just like having the big thing so the creator story is, is you, we didn't can you talk about some of the challenges in delivering that um you know i can kind of imagine some of them but can you talk about some of the challenges in doing that uh i mean it's it's a whole you know we basically when you know we we built 2k20 we had to basically create a whole brand new tool for our developers to use to create stories for my career and for 
uh, for showcase, right? And again, that 2K20 story was ass because something that I noticed too in regards to the 2K20 storyline, the male my player only wins or only uh, accomplishes a few things. Royal Rumble winner becomes Universal Champion becomes WWE Champion the female my player May Young May Young Classics winner she gets a trophy right for the May Young Classic she becomes NXT Women's Champion Raw Women's Champion uh, Smackdown Women's Champion uh, WWE Women's Tag Team Champion and Divas Champion you see how unbalanced that is? <laughs> so like I said, that story was ass. I didn't like how they they, they treated the uh, female my player, you know what I mean? Like like she's up here and the male my player is like down here somewhere. You know what I mean? It's like it, it wasn't very balanced between the two of them. And that's why, again, I cannot wait to check out the My Rise mode and play as both the female My Player and the male My Player. And I, I, I'm very thankful and appreciative that they're separate. I want to ask about My Rise, um, which is the evolution of the My Career concept. Um, are we using our own creative wrestlers? How does that? How does that start? How does that experience start? Yeah, so you, you basically walk into to the PC and you're getting your shot, right? And and so, which sounds a lot like how the story for 2K17 and 2K18. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, that was one of those things I noticed too. Uh, I didn't realize it at first, but then I, I'm, I'm watching YouTubers who play the older games. And I and I and I realized as I was watching that like, yeah you basically start out the same way in 2K17 that you would in 2K18. You're figuring out who you are, and one of the first things that we allow you to to, to define is your background, right? Like, what was your your your, your background? Were you you know an MMA fighter who wants to dip their toe into you know the sports the, the world of sports entertainment, or are you? Please, no backstories were the main character has like a dead parent or two dead parents and they were adopted and all that kind of crap please none of that you a former you know athlete or movie star um and once you select that you go into your customizations you know define the look of your character and then that that choice that you made will dictate the type of conversations you're going to have with not only superstars but like you know the executive because that they remember what your background is, it will it, it will affect like how social media responds to you. So like to me, and, and it's all about like you know, um, you know, you having a voice and, and you can also like respond. Man, you're gonna have uh, social media responding to you. So the, 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 does this mean that you're gonna have um, podcasters like, like like you did in 2K20 talking about your your player and everything and. Um, and then what? You're gonna have like some fake, made-up social media accounts where you're watching. Like, like, are you gonna have your own version of, of, of Twitter? And uh, we can look at people's, uh, uh, you know, tweets and stuff about your 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 uh, your uh, character and everything. Are you gonna have your own version of, of uh, YouTube? You know what I mean? Where you can watch people's videos of them talking about you and whatnot. But Bond in a negative way or a positive way. Uh, to to those things and the people will respond and and, and the game will recognize what what tra trajectory and path you're on right is this guy from you know of a, a heel or a face right so it, it's those things that we're, we're taking into account when walking through my rise and and we this year we also have separate male and female storyline right so and that is what again I've always wanted separate female and male my players in the my rise you know what i'm saying formerly known as the my player story mode i did not mind uh the uh the best friends male and female my player it's just i didn't like the story though the story sucked ass let's go so like you could have a different background for your male different background for your female just to yes. see or you know replay it as a different you know background um just to see what type of choices you have so like there's a lot of depth there that you know to me is is is, is kind of like why we you know 
went down this path with the evolution of my rise. It's like your rise to superstardom as a superstar in the WWE. Performance Center, you'll do an evaluation and be like, all right, which brand do you want to go to? Do you want to go to NXT, SmackDown, or Raw, right? And so like, you'll have that. Oh, so we can choose which brand we want to go to after the PC? Okay. Choice. But then you can also change, you know, you know, during the story and like, you were like, you know what? I'm not happy on Raw. I'm going to, you know, go to SmackDown. Oh, snap. I like that too. So if you don't like the way things are going for you on Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, whatever the hell, you, you, you can choose to go. You, you, you can tell the, the uh, GM of that show, yo, I want to be released from here because I'm going to go to this show. Ah, okay. So like there, there's a lot of choice there. All right, y'all. So the rest of that was pretty much just a bunch of filler. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I, I'm really glad I watched this interview. Uh, like I said, I think my, my confidence in 2K has been fully restored. Um, I did like a lot of the language that was being used in regards to um, their approach in working with these new modes and just really working on the game's overall performance and everything. And uh, I like that when uh, Brian was asking about you know any potential new features, um, I, I did like when Lionel was, was basically saying, well, not yet, maybe. But the thing is, we don't have, you know, the tools to really work with that stuff yet. So I'm like, okay, I I'm, I'm glad, you know, he's, he's making it quite clear as to why they're not implementing certain features, you know what I'm saying? Um, talking about, you know, not having the uh, tools to implement those features just yet. They got to make the tools, they got to perfect the tools that will allow them, that will permit them to add those other features that we want, you know what I'm saying? So yeah it, it it sounds like to me they have learned their lesson with 2k20 so yeah overall like i said i, I think I'm, I'm thoroughly pleased with with what i heard here uh hopefully you guys are too um like i said uh, there was a lot of filler talk so there were a lot of a lot of jump cuts i will link the uh original interview video so you guys can watch and listen to it on your own free time uninterrupted as you would like so that way you know just in case if there's any things that I may have missed that, that could have been important, you know what I mean, that you guys uh, will, will want to catch, you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, the channel is Operation Sports. Yeah, so yeah, make sure you guys go, go to Operation Sports, go check out this interview, you know what I'm saying, so you can watch it in full, because uh, again, I don't know, maybe, maybe there, there was something I cut out that I shouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, all right, y'all. Really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, y'all know what to do with that thumbs up down below. You know what to do with that comment section down below. I look forward to checking out y'all's feedback as I always do. And uh, yeah, in case you were wondering, yeah, no, this is not an NWL shirt. This is actually an NWL style JJV shirt that yes, you can purchase uh, at my merch store. The link for my merch store is in the, the uh, description. If it's not there, um, I'm pretty confident it's there, but it, in case if it's not, it's also in my um, in my bio section as well on my channel. So yeah, two ways to uh, hit up the merch store: uh, discount code uh, JV2. Yes, JV2 will help save you um, on all your purchases. So yeah, go hit up the merch shop. I got other uh, NWO style JJV merch on there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got a wide variety of stuff on there: T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, decals, all kinds of stuff. Bucket hats too. Um, you, you, you probably noticed I got a little scheme back there. He's wearing the uh, black and orange JJV bucket hat. Um, I also have a matching bucket hat sitting on, on the top of my uh, Everlast punching bag that matches this shirt. So, yeah, feel free to go check that out. You know what I'm saying? We'll greatly appreciate it. And uh, while you're at it, feel free to check out all the other links, including the links for the main channel where I do music reactions and also post my own original music there as well. Would be greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, till the next one, y'all have a blessed one. All right, peace.